In this tutorial, we're going to replace the ladder logic we used in the previous video with structured text in order to create a mock-up of a calculator. The HMI we developed in the previous video will stay exactly the same, so we don't need to change that. All we're going to change is the ladder into structured text. So, so let's just quickly recap. We had a HMI button called addition, which added value one to value two and put that into a total and took the total and put that into a grand total. We had a subtract that would subtract value one from value two and put that into the total. And then we added this, which checked to make sure that if the value was less than zero, it would take the total from the grand total. And if it was greater than zero, it would take the grand total from the total. This was to remove the minus sign. The next thing we did was we added the multiplication button, HMI multiplication, and we multiplied value one from value two into a total and added the value of the total to the grand total. And last, we done the division where we divided value one from value two and we put that into a total. We didn't get this working in the previous video because we haven't covered floating points. I'll look at that in a separate video. So let's continue. I'm going to create a blank piece of code and by default, it's a ladder. So let's change this and add a structured text. Right click program and add structured text. And I'm going to call this calc structure text. We'll leave it on sign at the moment. Now we're going to take our new program and we can delete it. And I'm going to set this as the startup program. Okay, so now we have our structured text program. And as you can see, we have no lines at present. With that done, let's transfer the symbols because we're going to use the same symbols from our ladder logic, control C, and put them into our new structured text. So now we have the same symbols in both, except we have no structured text. So let's start, we'll put in an if, if HMI addition equals true, then, and you can see here that the CX programmer actually fills it in for you and you can select from a drop down list. So then if HMI addition is true, then do something. Well, what I want to do is I want to add two things together. So the output from that is going to be total. I have two options here. I can use an equals like I did up here, or I can use a colon equals like this. The difference between the two is the compiler or the program will take this to mean I'm trying to check is this equal to this? Are they the same? In this case, I'm trying to say anything on this side, I'm now going to assign to this value or make these two things equal. This is checking to see if the two arguments are equal. And this is going to make the one on the right equal to the one on the left. So total is going to be equal to value one plus value two. At the end of that, we need to put in an end if. So each if needs an end if. So end if. So it's end underscore if. And don't forget there's a semicolon there and there's a semicolon there. So each line must be terminated with a semicolon unless it's a statement like a if statement. Then the semicolon goes on the end if. So our next one, just copy and paste that. It was HMI subtraction and if HMI subtraction equals two, I'm going to take the two of them away from each other. Now what I need to do is I need to take the value that's in total and I need to add that to the grand total. So let's put that in our if statement for now and we can see, can we tidy it up later? So it was grand total equals grand total plus the total. So we had an extra complication when we were looking at the grand total with subtraction. We had to check whether the total was less than or greater than zero. So let's just recap by looking at our ladder logic. Back in the first program, you can see that when we checked was total less than zero, we took total from grand total. And when it was greater than zero, we took grand total from total. So let's transfer that into a ladder logic or from a ladder logic into a structured text. So I have an if statement, total, 
is less than zero, then grand total equals total minus grand total and an end if. We could do this as an end if and we could have a separate if statement, but we could also use a if else if and we could say else if our if total is greater than zero, but it could actually be equal to zero. In that case, we don't want to take any value away. So let's just use two separate if statements. So this case again, it's going to be greater than, so I'll just change that to a greater than, and it's going to be grand total minus total. And don't forget your semicolons. With that done, we've transferred the addition and subtraction, and we've taken care of the issue with the minus signs. So let's take care of the multiplication next. So if HMI multiplication equals true, then total equals value one star value two. I've got my two, value two, and we'll have an end if. And again, we'll just put grand total in here as well. We'll look at ways of making this look a bit neater later on, but for now, we'll just put grand total within each if statement. And last but not least, we have to do our division. So with the division, what's going to be if HMI division equals true, then total equals value one divided by value two, semicolon, and then end if. With that done, we've now taken care of our four different functions, our add, subtract, multiplication and division. What we haven't done here is we haven't taken care of the differential. So what I need to do is I need to add four variables that I can use as differential um, holders within the symbols. I'm going to add four new variables and I'll call the first one diff underscore add. And I'll give that a value working bit 1.0. So I've gone ahead and I've created three more for division, multiplication, and subtraction. What this, so I'm going to start with our addition, and I'm going to add an and not. Diff addition equals true, then. So what have I done? So I'm going to add diff addition to the end of my code. And I'm going to make diff addition equal to the current value of HMI addition. If you remember from previous videos, this code is going to cycle repeatedly hundreds of times per second. When I press this button, or before I press this button, HMI addition is equal to zero. And diff addition is also equal to zero. So this code will not run because they're both equal to false. When I press this button, HMI addition will be equal to true and diff addition will not be equal to true. So this code will run. The program will attempt to run the rest of the code until it gets to the end, at which point it will set diff addition equal to the same value as the HMI, which will be one. The code will cycle and come back to the top, at which point HMI addition is equal to one because you're still pressing the button and diff addition is equal to one. 
so it won't run this code. So effectively, you've created your own differential function. That is, this code will only run through one cycle. When you release the button, this will go to zero, and this will still be equal to one, so this will not run. And when the code gets to the bottom, HMI addition is equal to zero, which will set diff addition equal to zero. You press the button again, this goes back to one, this is zero, because remember there's a not, therefore this will not run, and it will repeat itself. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add the and not for the subtraction, multiplication, and division. And I've added the differential checks for each of the functions, one for multiplication, one for subtraction, and one for division, and I've also added the three checks here at the bottom of the code. So that's my code now complete. So let's go ahead and test this with the HMI. So the simulation has started, so let's do the same test we did last time. So five plus five is equal to 10. Yep, and it adds 10 to my grand total. 20, 30. Two by five adds 10, so that's working as well. And a division, that still doesn't work. So let's now uh, check our minus. So three, so 59, so the next one should be 56, that works. So let's invert this and put the two there and the five there and see what happens. Okay, we have the same error that we were having before, but we copied exactly what we did from our ladder logic. So why is it not working? Let's go back and have a look at our code again and see can I explain it. So back in CX Programmer, you need to look at what we actually asked it to do. Putting the minus in here is not the same as using the numeric function within the ladder logic. That minus there makes this entire variable a minus, like it would do in maths. So what we need to do is use a different function. But what function can we use? Let's have a quick look at the structure text help by right-clicking, going structure to help, and we can have a look at the numeric functions. And the first function it gives us is ABS, our absolute value. So that will give me the absolute value and that will sort out my issue with the minus sign. So let's use that instead. Just for completion, we also have a square root. We have the natural, natural log. We can do the sine, cos, tan, arc. We can work out remainders. All this is within the function set. Back at our structure text, we can take these two lines and we can delete them. And we're going to replace that with simple abs. So I've updated the code. I'm using the abs function on total, which will give me a positive of total. I'm putting it back into the same value. And I'm going to use that to take it away from the grand total, which will always mean that the grand total is plus and it's taking a minus a smaller number away from it. And I'm putting that back into grand total. So let's just test this code and see does it work. Back in the simulator, we're going to try to minus it off and it's going down by three. And I'm going to change this again, make that a two and make that a five and let's see what happens. And it's going down by three as well. So that's fixed the problem. It's just important to note that you can't always transfer what you saw in ladder straight into structure text. There is always slight differences. Let's just check the multiplication and that's also working. So let's just review the code one more time before we finish up. So that concludes this tutorial. In the next very short tutorial, I'm going to show you how to fix the division with floating points.